In 1978, when I was just 11 years old, I went with my primary school, which was Hurst Clough Primary School, which sadly is no longer with us, uh, to watch a film being created in our area of Tameside in Greater Manchester. The film had a very famous uh, director who was an Academy Award winner for the film Midnight Cowboy. The two lead characters in the film were brand new to the industry, one which was an American actress who was playing the lead English part. We had an English actress who sadly took her own life just one year after the film was released. We had a Coronation Street star who turned down a bigger role in the film to just have a tiny little one so she could uh, sign a contract for the Coronation Street gig. And I was almost in the film. Yes, the film I'm talking about is Yanks. The film stars Richard Gere as Technical Sergeant Matt Dyson, Lisa Eckhorn as G. Morton, Vanessa Redgrave as Helen, William Devane as Captain John, Chick Venera as Sergeant Danny Ruffalo, and Wendy Morgan as Molly, and was directed by John Richard Schelzinger of Midnight Cowboy and Marathon Man fame. Now the film was a massive flop only making three, just over three million back from a six million pound budget. But that's not what this video is all about. Because what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go back and look at the filming locations for this film and see how they've changed from when the film was done in 1978 to present day of 2023. So let's get on with it and let's get to our first filming location, which is just over there, about five minutes drive from the training center. Now, here we are at our first filming location for Yanks and we're right in the center of Staley Bridge. I am in the First World War Memorial Gardens and this incredibly busy street you can see here is Trinity Street where it just crosses over the Victoria Bridge which goes over the River Tame. The Victoria Road Bridge dated 1867 is a Grade 2 listed building. Parapet walls are cast with the words Henry, Bailey, Sun and Co. Albion Ironworks, Miles Platin. So I guess they were the ones who actually made it. The bridge was built in the 30th year of Queen Victoria's reign and was named in honour of her. A central post bears a coat of arms of Staley Bridge and an ornamental lampstand on the coat of arms is the date 1991 and that was the date when the bridge was expanded. Now, if I show you this statue here, you might recognise it because this is the very first scene you see in the film where the trucks come over the bridge. You can also see they use the bridge again at the end of the film when the troops are leaving for D-Day and they're going to the railway station. So we're right at the very start of the film. It's a lovely part of Staley Bridge even though it is incredibly busy and these war memorial gardens are amazing really. But there's another iconic part of the film over there. So that's where we're going to next on our filming locations. Now I'm at the junction of Market Street, Trinity Street is just over there, and Waterloo Road. And this building you can see here, or this bit of a building you can see here, is in the film quite a few times over the course of the film so they come back here a few times. Now this building or what's left of this building we've been looking at is the old town hall of Staley Bridge. The building was designed by Fairbairn and Lily in a neoclassical style. It was built of ashlar stone and was officially opened on the 30th of December 1831. 
The town hall ceased to be a local seat of government when the enlarged Tameside Metropolitan Borough Council was formed back in 1974. The vacant building then became dilapidated. Work started on its demolition but was accelerated by a major fire which destroyed what was left of the building in June 1989. Now we're still on Market Street here and we're on the corner of Melbourne Street and this shop you can see here is the shop you see where in the beginning of the film in the actual title sequence where you see the ladies queuing up for the bread. Now this scene in the title sequence of the two guys riding the bike and also the soldiers in the back of the truck was also filmed on Market Street. And you see at the end of the film, you see the soldiers marching down Market Street. Now when I came to see it being filmed here, all these shops here had false fronts on them to make them look like a Second World War street. And again, you can see the building there at the bottom, or what's left of the building down at the bottom there, which you can see in the film. Also, when the soldiers are getting ready for D-Day, the lady smoking is just stood over there. But again, you can see the building in the background. Now, the next bit I want to take you to, which is just up there, is not a filming location, but it's quite important for me. Now, I am stood on Castle Street, or the corner of Castle Street and Melbourne Street here. Now, this is a very poignant place for me because this is where I met Richard Gere. So I walked up this street here, and when I got to this corner here, there was an army truck with some actors in it. And that's where I met Richard Gere and a couple of others of the cast who were in the truck. Now, where I am stood, just on the corner here, is where the camera truck was. And what I remember of it being a big white truck with a huge camera on the front of the truck and on the back of the truck. And what they were doing, the scene they were filming, was going up Market Street, where you see the guys in the back of the truck. Now, I had a chat with them while I was here, and this is where I ended up getting asked did I want to be in the film by a member of the crew? I don't know who he was. But I was talking to the actors in the back of the truck. I asked them if they were famous. And they said, no, not yet. Whatever that meant. But we do know they went on to become quite famous. I also here asked them if I could hold the guns. Now they had M1 Garand rifles and when they gave it to me, I think it was Richard Gere who actually gave me his rifle. It was rubber and I was so disappointed that the guns they had were fake. But obviously they're not going to give them real guns while they're driving around in the back of trucks. So this is where I met Richard Gere and where I was nearly in the film. And again, these scenes were right at the beginning of the film and they were filming this in the side street. Now the scene looks like they're actually driving around the countryside, but really they were in a side street with guys either side of the truck shaking it to make it look like it was moving. It's just the magic of Hollywood. Now we've just come out of the town centre, which is just over there, onto the very busy Stamford Street running along here. And the house in the background here, you might recognise. Because again, in the title sequence, you see two ladies stood outside this house. And also, a gentleman who looks out of the window up there. Now this part of the title sequence was actually not filmed in Tameside at all. It was filmed at South Warm Bank, Halifax. I think I found the exact spot on Google Maps. So you can see the pavement goes in and bends around and you can see the stone wall on the right hand side of the road does exactly the same thing. But what you do notice is the houses are missing and also when the camera pans around to the left, the church at the top of the hill is also missing. But I think this is the exact spot where it was filmed. Now, the next filming location we're going to go to is just on the edge of town over there. And then um, it's where I was supposed to be in the film. So let's get over there then. Now the next uh, filming location for Yanks is at a golf club. And this is Stamford Golf Club in Staley Bridge.
Now, just to my left there is the entrance, Huddersfield Road. This behind me here is the 11th tee. Now, they did quite a few scenes here. They actually built an army camp here. And this is where I could have been in the film. So if you have seen the film and you see the two lads carrying the golf clubs for the ladies and gents, uh, Helen and uh, Captain John, I was going to be one of those lads carrying the golf clubs. Now, what had happened is one of the guys, one of the lads who was supposed to be doing the filming was off doing something else so he couldn't do it so they needed somebody to stand in quickly that nearly was the part I was going to do I remember it like it was yesterday I was going to get uh, nine pounds for the day or 50 pounds for the week and I was queuing up to get my hair cut when the headmaster of the school Mr Ashton pulled me out of the queue and stopped me doing the filming so that was the end of my filming career Stamford Golf Club was established in 1901 when a Scottish expat, Mr W. Wilson, arrived as the manager of Carbrook Printworks in 1899. He did a deal with local farmers to rent the land and on Saturday the 24th of August 1901 the golf club was incorporated. Now the power station you see in the golf scenes in the film is actually Hartshead Power Station in Hayrod. Preparations for the power station at Hayrod began in 1916 when 26 acres of land were purchased. The station opened in 1926 by the Staley Bridge, Hyde, Mosley and Duckingfield Transport and Electricity Board. The power station was closed on the 29th of October 1979, the year the film was actually released, and it was demolished September the 24th 1989, although part of the site is still used today as an electricity substation. So, Stamford Golf Club very quiet at the moment because it's absolutely piddling it down it's freezing cold and it's just about to go dark so that's the end of the filming for today so catch you tomorrow then our next filming location is at the other barracks they used which was at steeton in keighley not far from the railway station they used. The place they use is the former munitions factory at Steeton, which is sadly no longer there. They've knocked it down and built a new housing estate. Now there are three things that did survive the demolition and they are the pillboxes. Now these two pillboxes together, which is one's two story, one's a single story, and they're further over. And there is a single story one, which you can see here in the film. And now this is what it looks like today. Now all three pillboxes are now grade two listed and hopefully they're going to be preserved so we can all see them in the future. Our next Yanks filming location is Moor Lane in Warrington, which is 45 minutes drive from Tameside. Now in this scene, when Matt and Jean go on their date, you see an American warship sailing up the Manchester Ship Canal, which took six years to build and was opened in 1894. It is a 36 mile long inland waterway linking Manchester to the Irish Sea at Liverpool. It generally follows the original route of the rivers Mersey and the Irwell through the historic counties of Cheshire and Lancashire. Now the bridge we can see is the Moor Lane Swing Bridge which is a grade 2 listed building. Built around 1894 it is a steel segmental arch riveted structure with lattice parapet built up stanchions cross bracing and bracing across the carriageway at a high level. The bridge is operated from the north bank by means of hydraulic power and has an arrangement of support buildings. It was constructed by Sir William Arrell and 
Co and it weighs 700 tons and has 64 roller bearings with a 28 feet diameter turning circle. Now the amount of freight carried by the canal peaked in 1958 at 18 million long tons but changes to the shipping methods and the growth of container ships during the 1970s and 80s caused the traffic to decline resulting in the closure of the docks at Salford in 1984. Now the location we're at at the moment is, this is the very busy A6, so Stockport's that way, Hazel Grove is that way. Behind you is Stockport School and behind me is Stockport Grammar. So why is this place important for the film Yanks? Well this location here where the gates are now is where the Davenport Cinema slash Theatre used to be. And in the film, this is where they filmed all the cinema scenes. The dual purpose cinema and live theatre opened on the 17th of June 1937 with Edward Everett Horton in The Man with the Mirror. It was designed by Charles Hartley and it has a seating capacity of 1,750 people. It was owned and run by Mrs. Esther Harriet Burns, who in 1964, at the age of 89, sold the Davenport to Tatton Cinemas Gatley Limited, who continued to run it with. With a mixed film and stage use. Mrs Burns continued to have interest in the cinema until her death which was just short of her hundredth birthday. In 1972 the former cafe was converted into a luxury cinema seating just 180 people. During the early 1990s the entire Tatton circuit was sold to the Apollo Theatres who maintained the policy of the Davenport until 1997. When the film Yanks was filmed at the cinema you can see Ronald Curtis playing the Compton Theatre organ in the audience sing-along. Now the Davenport Theatre slash cinema closed in March 1997 and was demolished in August 1997. So there's nothing for us to see here, only a nice set of gates and a quick fit still here and this is the reason why I found this so easily because all the pictures of the Davenport Theatre which you've seen are right next to the quick fit on the A6 and the grammar school is just here and it was sold to the grammar school to make a car park entrance anyway not much more to see here because it's been demolished so we're going down that way which is Stockport Town Centre to the next location now, the location we're at now is one of the most used locations in the film. So here is the old Stockport Indoor Market and here is the church where they filmed the scenes where Jean uh, wrote in the condolence book. The indoor market and St Mary's Church are found at the junction of Millgate, Churchgate and Marketplace. The site of Stockport's indoor market has housed a market since the Anglo-Saxon period with a granting of a formal charter in 1260. It has been in continuous use as a market ever since. This covered market hall is a grade 2 listed building dating from 1861. Back then it was known as the Glass Umbrella. Let's have a look at the church first. Now these are the arches that Matt and Jean walk through after Jean has signed the condolence book. And they show them walking here across all these grey stones. Now this is where you see Matt and Jean riding their bicycle. So they start from the top there where the church is, they come down here and then they ride down this hill here.
Now, when Matt and Jean rode their bikes down this road here, they used a high up camber angle up here, probably on a crane, and this building wasn't here then. And they rode the bikes down here and then round the corner there, missing people and the car. Now, these buildings weren't here when they filmed Yanks. They were seen in the film as a bombed out house. Now this is where you see the two MPs near the end of the film walking along here outside the pub but as you can see the pub's called the Bull's Head not the Black Swan. And this was just before the troops were getting ready to leave for D-Day. You also see the captain get into his jeep up there and he drives his jeep down there. Did you see all the market stalls down the side of the indoor market? And you can see more clearly now the uh, demolished building with this young man blowing up a um, blue. Now just opposite the bombed house is a set of steps which are used quite a few times in the film. And this is the landlord of the Black Swan giving a case of beer to the GIs which they can take with them to D-Day. Now the final scene I can find in this location is when Jean is going to meet Matt at the cinema again. And she walks down this left hand side of the road where the landlord was giving out the beer in the last scene. And here you can quite clearly see she's walking down the steps. So this is what the steps look like during the filming and this is what the steps look like today. Now the next filming location for the film Yanks is here right in the centre of Hyde on Market Street. So this is Market Street and this is Hyde Town Hall. So this is where all the celebration scenes for the New Year's Eve ball <laughs> were held. The foundation stone of the new town hall building was laid by the then mayor Thomas Ashton on the 30th of June 1883. The town hall was designed by James William Beaumont in the neoclassical style and as you can see it's built in red brick and stone facings. The town hall was said to have taken a year to construct at a cost of £10,000. The building was officially opened by the second mayor of Hyde, Edward Hibbert, on the 27th of June, 1885. The town hall clock and bells you can see here were generously presented to the people of Hyde by Mr Joshua Bradley, a then retired spinner. Now, if you do live in Hyde and you go to the restaurant stroke pub, the Joshua Bradley, then you're actually going eating and drinking in this then very wealthy man's house. Now let's get back to this New Year's Eve ball. Now I don't know if you realise the GI doing all the dance moves, yeah, and he is pretty good, who gets a really poor deal at the end of this section, is actually quite famous in one of James Cameron's really good films. Well if I told you the guy was called Al Matthews, does that give you any more clues? Anyway, this is the other film he was famous for. So did you get it? Well, Al Matthews played Gunnery Sergeant Apon in the 1986 James Cameron film Aliens, which is actually one of my all-time favourite films. Now, this is the back part of the town hall where they actually the, the ballroom is. But the ironic thing is, just here <laughs> is a cinema where everybody in Hyde went to see the film Yanks. Did they know it was only filmed just over the road? But I couldn't go and watch the film at the cinema here because I was only 11 and it was a certificate 15 because of the sex scenes what are in the film. But I had to wait till it came on TV in the UK before I could watch the 
film I went to see being filmed. And I think it was about four or five years after the film had been released that it was put on UK TV. So the cinema where it was shown to the place where it was filmed. Now another part of the film which wasn't filmed in Tameside was when Jean and Matt leave the town hall after the New Year's celebrations to get away from the MPs. Now it's not High Town Hall they're coming out of, it's the town hall in Chiswick on Heathfield Terrace, which is in London. So they went all the way to London just to film this little bit. And if you look at this picture, you can actually see it's a perfect match for when they come running out of the door. So if you look at the two front doors, you can see they are quite similar and it makes you wonder why they wanted to go all that way to London just to film them coming out of a front door. So while we're on the subject of film locations outside of Tameside, they went to Wales to film this part. So they went to Hill Terrace in Landudno and they went to the Grand Hotel. Now the Grand Hotel in Landudno has a special place in our hearts for myself and my wife Charlotte because it was the very first hotel we stayed in on our very first Valentine's night or Valentine's weekend away. And we actually stayed in the room where these two guys were staying when they were hanging out the stockings. It wasn't a fantastic room as you can see, it wasn't fantastic weather and the food was rubbish, but on the way home from Landudno we got engaged. How amazing was that? Another film location for Yanks miles away from Tameside is Scotney Castle in Kent. Scotley Castle was used for the home of Helen where Captain John frequented on numerous occasions throughout the film. Scotley Castle is a moated house which was originally built in 1378 but is now ruined. It was for 350 years the home of the Darrell family but they sold out to Edward Hussey in 1778. In 1952 the place was left to the National Trust but Bessie Hussey was allowed to live in the castle until her death she used the money from the production company from the film of Yanks to build the kitchen that you see in the place today. When the National Trust took over they rented out several apartments in the castle and on the estate. One of them was let out to the Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher who rented the Belfry flat for the time during the 70s and 80s when it served as a weekend escape for her from the Westminster life. Now I'm just on my way to another filming location for Yanks, which is about 15 minutes away driving from Staley Bridge, which is nothing to do with Tameside. <laughs> it's actually classed as Oldham. So we're gonna go to Dob Cross, which is a tiny little village in Oldham, where quite a lot of the scenes were filmed at the beginning, in the middle, and the end of the film. So, 50 minutes drive, let's get on with it. Now, here we are at the square at Dob Cross, and you might recognize that building in the background there, because that was Jean's mum and dad's shop. Now, standing here in the square, there's quite a few things we can see. Now, this road coming up there is Woods Lane, and right at the very beginning of the film, you see the army trucks come round this corner. <laughs> Also, this is where Ken comes back from leave from the army. He walks up this street. Obviously, we've got the shop. Probably one of the best scenes filmed in the shop was when the ladies were all queuing up for the oranges. Could you imagine doing that today? Well, if the prices keep going up, we probably will be. And if you look on that corner there, so that's Sugar Lane coming up here. If you look at that corner there where the silver cars are, that's where Molly's bus was parked right at the very beginning of the film. Now this camera angle is looking up Sugar Lane towards the square where I'm stood. So just standing in this one spot you can see lots of stuff. Also here, this is where um, Jean's brother stood when his mate came round and told him the Yanks were going and they needed to go and get all the free stuff. And he says, I can't, my mum's dead. So he was stood here, but there was railings here, which have now gone. 
The monument you see in the square was first erected in 1901 by public subscription as a tribute to Oldham-born doctor Walter Henry Fox Ramsden, Saddleworth's first medical officer of health. An additional panel was added to the monument in memory of his grandson, W.P. Stonehouse, also a local physician, who died in 1998. can't believe the phone box is still here. So you can still see the phone box in a lot of the scenes of the film, but the post box, which was in that corner there, is no longer there. Now the phone box outside the pub isn't actually a phone box anymore. It's a defib centre, which you see a lot of phone boxes turned into defib centres now, especially where we live. Now let's have a look down here and see exactly where Ken walked. This is where Mrs. Shenton welcomes home Ken and he tells her how well she's looking. Now this is Woods Lane here and this is where you see in the film Ken coming back from service for his two week holiday. You see him pass this house here and you can tell because the door tricked up. There are windows there now which weren't there then. Now if you look just behind Ken you should see the bricked up door. And then he walks along here and then he speaks to the lady at the door here. And this is where the kids get his kit bag and uh, put his hat on. And then he walked around the corner there to where Jean lives at the shop. You also see the schoolgirls running across the road here and across the square past this monument. Now at the end of the film, you see Jean run out of the shop when she's read the cake, what Matt's made. She runs down the street here and thumbs a lift in the back of one of the army trucks to take her to the train station. So this is where Molly's bus was parked, right here. And there actually is a bus stop, believe it or not. So this is where it was parked when the Americans came around in the trucks and went around that way and shouted stuff to her. So this is where the bus was packed. So it's just started to really rain again. So that's the end of us filming here at Dog Cross at the square, where quite a few of the scenes for Yanks were filmed at the beginning, in the middle and the end. Now, if you're wondering who the Coronation Street star was, what I mentioned right at the very beginning, it is Lynn Perry, who played Ivy Tilsley from 1972 till the character was killed off in 1994. Who's the bloody town, now, the end sequence where you see the troops boarding the trains and saying their farewells and getting ready for D-Day was filmed at Keeley Railway Station on the Keeley and Worth Valley Railway. They made use of authentic World War II locomotives, which are now preserved on the Keeley and Worth Valley Railway. There was about 800 locals used as extras in the film, and the train station was completely painted in the old LNER colours, or the London and North Eastern Railway. There was wartime posters and signs on the walls, there were kit bags on the platform, and filming took place in June and July 1978. Now the actress who sadly died just a year after the film was released on the 26th of November 1980 was Welsh actress Rachel Roberts who played Mrs Morton who was Jean's mother. Now hopefully you've enjoyed this video on the filming locations for Yanks. Hopefully you've got some information off it. Hopefully I haven't made too many mistakes. And if you were in the film, then put down in the comments below and tell me what you actually did in the film and how much did you get paid? Because I was so excited when they said I was going to get nine quid for the day. Remember, it was 1978. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.